Welcome to Thrift Store Playhouse. We stage dramatic readings of the back covers of teen books and romance novels we find at thrift stores. Join us, will you, in a dank basement beneath a loud cafe. Do I... do I dare? I fold it... You can dip it. into it if you want. Ugh. <laughs> Sicko. Yeah. So, little peek behind the curtain. Uh, while we were looking for books at, I think this was, this one was from the Habitat for Humanity store. Um, Not Habitat for some manatees, that's a different thing. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were, we specifically, we were looking in the young adult, well, young adult and children's book section. And we came across this, which is for neither children or young adults. But somehow both? But somehow both. Uh, and the subtitle is A Romantic, Sensual, and Heartwarming Story of Gay Love. The exhilarating novel of two extraordinary circus flyers who spend a lifetime obsessed with one another. This one's a little different. Uh, we're going to give you an excerpt um, for purely editorial reasons. Yes. And, um, and note this is not altered in any way. This is... This is exactly what it says. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, in the voice of a... 50s um, instructional leave it to beaver reel to reel voice you'd hear like you know so in order to do this voice you have to start out with the word billy and imagine you're smoking a pipe talking about the birds and the bees to your son who you can't remember his actual name tommy billy, billy. timmy whatever donkey donkey <laughs> you're swapping mail stars and in the morning i'll make it waffles <laughs> Get out of my swamp! Wow, the ADD in here. <laughs> Billy, God forbid I should come between you two. This is going to be more of a Zap Brannigan voice. Go for it. Okay. God forbid I should come between you two. The kind of thing you two have together it doesn't happen often among our kind of people. Hell, it doesn't happen that often in marriage even. Uh, for two people that love each other, care what happens to the other one, stay friends and partners even outside the sack. That's something special, something everybody dreams about, not just homosexuals. I don't think that's how he would say it. <laughs> uh, but I feel like with that, it, there'd be a, with a, with a, specifically with the Zap Banner, your voice, it'd be, a, it'd be a, a noted pause that even with... Homosexuals. <laughs> because he brings a little <laughs> bit. Not. We got to do a Patrick Warburton at some point. It's something special. Something. It's like he has constantly has oh. heartburn and he's out of breath. Yeah. Think about faithfulness, about forsaking all others. That's for teenagers, not dry behind the ears. I heard it's for mamas and papas raising children where someone else in the picture would rock the boat for the kids. Get the mamas and papas with more breath. The mamas. <laughs> the papas. <laughs> Doesn't work for men trying to play that game. Maybe for two women it could do it. You try and play chastity and faithfulness and never touching anyone else and jealousy and you'll wind up hating each other. You know, I'm, almost, I'm almost doing a Barney Five in a way. <laughs> I'm getting so close to Barney Five. I mean, let's, okay. You can't belong to each other that way. You're not his property any more than he is yours. I want you. It's as simple as that. What's he got to do with anything? <laughs> but what's that got to do with anything? That's something I to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. So, for contrast, now we'll do a uh, hetero <laughs> romance novel. Yeah. And um, let's get some uh, contrast. Yeah. Here. You look at one thing and you, you go to the other one and you're like, hey, these, these things are different. <laughs> It does kind of go into bonnet points. Like, yeah. yeah, these things are different. Yeah. Look out here. I mean, these things are different. Yeah. Here at The Rock, we have two basic rules. And then he goes, bet you didn't know that. <laughs> I worked at NASA for six years as a janitor. These hands are registered weapons. <laughs> <laughs> this is another uh, Harlequin romance. It's a super romance. So I don't know if that's just Ooh. like one of the better ones or, you know, it involves uh, like kryptonite. Dear reader, do you believe in second chances? I feel like that also needs to be Ken Burns. <laughs> so it's kind of a southern accent? Yeah, so it's sort of a, it's a southern accent and it's 
It's very forlorn because it could be the last letter you ever write. It's kind of a low-key Christopher Walken. But yeah, it's that. Cause that's a because that's a very sort of Carolina's kind of draw to it, and yeah, and it, but it's it's very sad. It's very forlorn because you miss you miss your family so, and tomorrow who knows you could you could catch a catch a cannonball right in the gut. So. I just want to sit out in the middle of the country and eat my biscuits with a side of molasses. Pepperidge Farms remembers. Pepperidge Farms doesn't remember shit. <laughs> Pepperidge Farms has forgotten more than you'll ever know. <laughs> it's like Pepperidge Farms having an acid trip and recalling some fantasy they found in a journal. Pepperidge Farms is having trouble remembering where its keys are. <laughs> Because, I mean, Pet Pepperidge Farms came in. Usually they go in the bowl, but they're not in the bowl. Pepperidge Farms has to continually <laughs> refer to itself in the third person. <laughs> yes! Anyway, Pepperidge Pe Farms needs to go to work. <laughs> Pepperidge Farms has really sort of let itself go a little bit, but, you know, Pepperidge Farms is still fun. Pepperidge Farms sold the farm years Bought the farm? Bought, sold the farm. <laughs> sold the farm. I don't remember. Bought, bought the farm means they died. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Cowboy Come Home is about second chances. A second chance at love, a second chance for family. A chance to change not the past, but the future. And what better place to set such a story than a town in West Texas called Happy? There's a question mark. <laughs> Yes, Happy Texas is a real place, although I have fictionalized nearly everything about it. And while the characters are fictional, I like to think I might meet people like them when I go back to visit. You're talking to a recording of Pepperidge Farms, <laughs> remembers. If you'd like to leave a message, 